Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Luxury Podcast, your source for all things luxury and lifestyle. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, today I have Susan Miller on the line, and she's founder over at astrologyzone.com. Susan, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you for asking me. This is, oh, so much fun. Thank you. Oh, so I'm really excited to get into your brand, um, astrologyzone.com, and how you're helping um, your clients. But before we get into that, I'd like to go a little bit further in your background. So how did you get started in your career? I didn't want anyone to know that I knew astrology. That was supposed to be a secret. I um, majored in business at NYU. I actually graduated most likely to succeed. But it it was a hard uh, childhood because I was born with a birth defect. And I grew up in hospitals. And finally, the problem which baffled doctors reached epic proportions when I was 14 and they had to go in and do an exploratory because no one knew what it was. And I would have attacks every once in a while when uh, we wouldn't know when it was coming. It was approximately once a year, and I'd have to go to bed for six to eight weeks and not move an inch. And they found out I was bleeding internally. And once they got in, it was hard for them to get out. I needed multiple surgeries. I've had 40 blood transfusions in my life. So it was a long climb back up Mount Everest to health. But um, I wanted to know if all the therapy was going to work. I, you know, I was 14. By the time I got out of the hospital, I was 15. I had crutches and a big metal brace up to my hip. I had two and a half years of physical therapy ahead of me. And I just wanted to know if I'd look like everybody else. And I do want to say here that I did pray. I am a, a devout Catholic, and I prayed to all my saints. And But I was young. I wanted to know if I could go to parties. So I, uh, my mother knew astrology, and she um, wouldn't teach me. I said, what? <laughs> You're a scholar. How do, how do you not teach me? She said, you have to study 12 years, or you won't be any good. I said, well, where am I going to go? We live in a walk-up. I live with you. I'm a teenager. <laughs> Where am I going to go? <laughs> she said, you'll start reading for your friends in a year. I said, I don't have any friends. <laughs> I don't go to school. <laughs> you know, if you don't go to school, you don't have any friends. And people always go, uh, no, I didn't mind. I, uh, I'm one of these kids that I was okay to be alone. I did my homework. The Board of Ed works with kids like this, and they sent a teacher to the house for two hours a week. And you filled in the rest, believe me. I, I changed it to two hours of math, and then I taught myself the rest. And then I went to NYU. So it was a little odd going from junior high to college, you know, but I did it. And uh, I went into the photography field. I became – well, first I, I started at 17 and Cosmopolitan and uh, – well, my very first job was Life magazine just before it closed. And I loved life. I stayed there about a year and a half. But things were changing at Time, Inc. But Time, Inc. would have a very strong presence in my life. So I'm very sorry that it has died and become Meredith now. I, you know, there was something extraordinary about Time, Inc. But they, I guess, mismanaged things and didn't see that times were changing. Mm. And uh, they were so slow to to understand what they had to do but they um i was i became an agent for commercial photographers because i like to be in my own business i'm good with math i'm good with technical and um i would look at a hundred portfolios before i picked the photographer and i picked one that did splashes spills and pours and went and got it registered, the R with the circle around it, the federal trademark for spill life. My biggest client was Coca-Cola. It was a very hard uh, client to crack because the great Hashi was doing it and Pearl Waller. And there were people who were embedded in McCann Erickson, but I was able to crack through that. And um, I was very successful at being an agent. And one day we did a Cheerios uh, splash fill in for 
and uh, we changed the milk because milk looks gray like water on eight by ten film. But but uh, you don't touch the product. The Cheerios had to be authentic, and they always have someone there to make sure that you're not touching it. And uh, the I took Sachi and Sachi to to a very beautiful lunch to thank them for the um, for everything you know for that beautiful assignment. And that's when the creative director said to me, I, I think my wife would love you. And, and I remember saying to him, I would love her. What does she do? And he said, <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's creative director of Warner Books. She has 30 people under her, and I think she'd like you. And so I met her, and I loved her. We really connected. And she'd give me books and galleys and, you know, I love books. And... um and then I'd read her chart, like for her birthday, she'd take me to the China Grill, which is an expensive restaurant right near the Time Life building when they were on 51st and, or well, 50th and um, 6th Avenue. And one day I said to her, Jackie, you should buy a lotto ticket. She crosses her arms in front of her chest and says, that's a waste of money. I said, well, it is. I agree. But I can narrow it down to the last two weeks of December. You know, from the middle to the last day. She said, I'm not going to do it. I said, well, you're off today, Susan. And I'm like, I don't make this up. And she, she keeps <laughs> shaking her head. No, I'm not going to do it. But she forgot that everybody in the department bought raffle tickets to the Cancer Society. Because there was a little 12-year-old whose mother was an editor, and he mm. wanted to win the bicycle. So he said, would you buy a book? Would you buy three books? You know, Everybody said, sure, come here. I'll, I'll buy some. Let me get my wallet. And on New Year's Eve, on December 31st, <laughs> she comes home with her husband, and her answering machine says, Jackie, congratulations. You won first prize. You won the Porsche. <laughs> and she said, Susie, there are 30 editors outside my door that want to meet you. <laughs> and I said, no, Jackie, you had the right aspects. Most of us will never have anything even close to what you have. And I was right on a number of things, but it raised my profile. And uh, she said, I'm going to get you a book. Well, that took a few years, but she did get me a small book, and I wrote it, and it sold out. And in the summer of 1995, she said, I'm, I've got you an appointment with the webmaster of Time Incorporated. And I'm like, oh, my God, what do they want? She said, they don't know what they want. You tell them. Now, they did know what they want. But since she had said it that way, I came with lots of ideas. So if you're meeting Mr. Big, you better have a lot of ideas in case you didn't oh, yeah. like the okay. first one. <laughs> They wanted something short for women every day. I wanted something long for men and women once a month. And I talked them into it. And Astrology Zone was born that summer. But I didn't go on their servers. My my anniversary is December 14th, 1995. So I'll be 25 years at the end of this year. It's pretty exciting. <laughs> wow. That and I is love the internet. And, you know, you didn't make a lot of money in the beginning. So I kept my day job. And then I worked at night on my on my website, and I think everybody has to do that. So many people say to me, should I quit my job and start a startup? No, you have to have money coming in. You should <laughs> do both. You should work day and night the way I did. But I had two little birds in the nest. I, I put them through private school and then college, and then I paid their student loans, all of them, every penny. Because my father had done that for me, but he didn't send me to private school. But I was obsessed with education because, remember, I had to teach myself high school. So mm -hmm. I really wanted them to have a good start. And so, so that's why I had to – my husband was always out of work constantly. He was just hopeless. So it wasn't gambling or drugs or money or, any you know, anything, girls, nothing, nothing like that. He just – I think was depressed. Um, his mother had died when he was little, and I, I think it never left him. It was a tough childhood. And so I uh, I just became the breadwinner, but I love the Internet. Oh, I love it so much. And, and in 2002, I went into apps, and uh, now I'm refreshing my app, and we hope to have it on Google and, and uh, Apple um, for the iPhone. 
and the watch, which I'm already on the watch now, and the tablet, but we're going to upgrade everything and, uh, you know, make a nicer navigation. And, you know, things change after a few years, so you have to keep reinvesting. But um, it's a Absolutely lot of fun. Absolutely amazing. If what, you do what you love, you'll, you'll do it and you'll What an hard. amazing story. So, I mean, just what an amazing story of persistence <laughs> and of taking a gift that you have and a, and a craft that you honed and really turning it into something big. Um, let's, uh, let's go a little bit further into astrologyzone.com and the platform. And I know, I know we, we're kind of touching the surface on it, but let's go further for my listeners. I definitely want them to check it out. I mean, I've been checking it well, out myself. Oh, really? Yeah, I have 37% men. I always felt that it was silly that, that companies would aim just to women because mm-hmm. men l- want to know the future as much as women do. And actually, in the beginning, in Mesopotamia, in 2500 B.C., when it started in Babylonia and by the Chaldeans, uh, it was mainly the province of the king to have an astrologer or very rich families uh, because they were the only ones that could afford the services of a mathematician who would be teaching in a nearby university and he'd have to come by horseback to the castle and then make it back so he could teach the next day. So, um, you know, so I, I, you know, reporters say to me, uh, you have male readers. I said, listen, especially young between 25 and I would say 40, a whole group of of kids poured out of the colleges in 2008, just when we were having a crash, a terrible financial crash, the worst recession we had ever seen uh, since the depression, and and they were they were confused. Um, I have friends at Microsoft who have access to amazing research, and they said, "Oh, millennials are angry." I said, they're angry? Yeah, well, everything their parents told them didn't turn out. Work hard, study hard, get good grades, you'll get a good job. They're having trouble. And I would sit in a cafe, and there'd be two guys next to me talking. I'm like, excuse me, are you millennials? And they would laugh, yeah. I said, are you angry? Yes. (laughs) It was like, (laughs) oh, oh my God. And, uh, boy, Microsoft does good research. But now... Now we have the equivalent of a depression only 12 years later. So millennials think the world is a dangerous place. And who could blame them for feeling that way? But it's unusual. They they didn't have time to put any money away. They're paying student loans. And I, I wish the parents would help them more. You know, uh, I sacrificed everything, vacations, you know, I never had a car, of course, <laughs> live in Manhattan. But, you know, you just you just have a goal and you just fixate on it until you complete it. And uh, I just wish parents could help them a little, even if it's just half or 25%, but something, because they're paying such high interest. So I have found that men say to me, I'm interested in what you have to say. Give me choices. There's a rock in the middle of the road. Should a big one, huge, a boulder. Should I build a bridge over it? Should I take a lever and try to push it away? Should I build a road around the side? Should I go in the opposite direction? Should I use dynamite to try to blow it up? Tell me my choices. Because men don't want to be told what to do. And, and I like that. And astrology, with its rich structure, is fabulous for creative brain uh, storming. And you can come up with a variety of answers And really, only you knows the right answer because you're Mm -hmm. living with this problem. So that's why Astrology Zone, uh, (laughs) this month it's it's about 46,000 words divided by 12. We have eclipses this month and next month. So I really had to do a lot of explaining <laughs> and um and I you know time ink went with me when I said we have to do it once a month because when you shorten astrology it becomes misleading and people walk around with the wrong impression I need to give them the detail but in a friendly warm way never using technical terms and so um I have all ages but Google Analytics does tell me that when um 
when they reach 65, they fall off. I only have like 5%. I'm like, wait, everybody's supposed to read me. Where are you? Come back. <laughs> 65 is not your grandmother's 65 anymore. It's more like 50, you know. So, um, but I think when you get older, you're very confident in yourself and, and you've, you know, have you ever gone to your grandmother and said, oh, grandma, my boss is a tyrant. I'm having trouble with love. My, my landlord's psycho. And she'll look at you. Like, you know, I had that problem in 1946, and she'll laugh. <laughs> and she'll laugh because she she conquered it, you know. But at the time, she thought it was the end of the world like you do, you know. And um, you do get better at handling life's, you know, challenges. You do. You get better and better with it. That's awesome. So I have this wide audience. I have 11 million uniques. A year, 1.5 million a month, according to Google. Um, most are between 25 and um, 35 to 49. So 25 to 49. And uh, most live in big cities. Very high uh, education. Um, 43% went to college and graduated, and an extra 40 Four percent have master's degrees. That's extraordinary. I do have 18 to 25, but they're only about 18 percent. And I feel that you don't have real challenges until you're about 25. I even noticed, you know, with people around me that they would, you know, later they would start reading me. You know, kids as they got a little bit older would start reading me. And I have two daughters, so, you know, one in New York, one in L.A., and we're really close. We're on FaceTime all the time. <laughs> and they ask me, you know, Mommy, what's uh, what's a good time to send up my mailings? Uh, what's a good time for me to sign this contract? You know, so they do check in, and I tell them. But I publish a calendar once a year, and it gives you all your best days, and in English, not in Astro Babel, what it means for each day, and you can pick the day you want to go in. In all the magazines in New York, you go up to CNN or Harper's Bazaar or Elle or any of them, they're hanging everywhere, especially in the sales department where they're trying to make money. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I know I come out of sales. I know how hard it is. You know, I, I do when you're selling um, the services of a top photographer. It's still a lot of competition. You know, you know what I used to do? I just, you know, I'm sure everyone is cleaning their closets. I'm sure all your listeners probably are too. And I was rearranging the closet. I was like, what's in this box? Oh, my, I had bought 30 rabbit's feet. And in, um, in, I can't. And in photography, <laughs> when they say, uh, oh, you, you know, you're not the low bid. I was never the low bid. I was, I was kind of high. And I, I would say, oh, okay, the other guy got it. Good luck on that. And I'd hand him a rabbit's foot. I will oh. be available for the reshoot. You know, if you need us, just give us a call. We'd be happy to fix it. <laughs> That's it was so very funny. effective. People would laugh, and you I know, can't. You have to, you know. <laughs> so I That's still have hilarious. a few. I still have have some. Oh. Of them, so. so Susan, so, um, um, so hmm. Susan, um, I, even though I can talk to you about this all day long, I, lo <laughs> I love your platform. I love what you're doing. I love the app. I also, also all the um, other things that you're, you're you're creating with this. I mean, it's just amazing. <laughs> that being said. Um, we're about out of time for this interview. Um, if, oh, somebody's okay. listen, if, if somebody's listening to this, um, for my audience, they want to learn more about astrologyzone.com um, or they want to connect with your, you, a lot of different things you're doing. I, I think they should go to the website. I mean, you have a calendar, you have the apps, you have a lot of different mm -hmm. amazing things coming yeah. on your newsletter. What's the best way for people to connect with the brand? Oh, they should write to the site. Uh, azpress at astrologyzone.com. We read every single letter and every night at five o'clock Courtney calls me and reads me the letter so that I can rest my fingers because <laughs> besides writing for the site I write for Vogue Japan, W Korea, Temple in Turkey, Claudia Brazil, Amica Italy, Esmo to Spain, Vogue Germany, Vogue China, Vogue Greece. I just left Vogue Germany because of the translations were getting expensive for them but um, you know I'm always looking into new things and working with corporations too like Tory Burch or Rulala or international coffee creamers uh, 
different companies have come to me and we have a lot of fun and you know because astrology is about life so I can make it fit almost any industry and it gives me some diversity and some fun you know so I, I enjoy it so yes if you write to the site we will answer your letter definitely I'm also on Twitter and Instagram as at astrology zone because there's too many Susan Millers. And on Facebook, I'm Susan Miller's Astrology Zone. We do look at the DMs, the, you know, the direct private messages too. So those are the three, um, social media that I'm on. My favorite is Twitter. I just love Twitter. I, they say writers like Twitter. I still so love Twitter. I still love you Twitter. Do. I don't okay. care what anybody says. I love Twitter. I, love I don't it. care what they say. It's my favorite. <laughs> and I've met the people there, and they're so nice, you know. So, um, yeah, and, uh, it, Twitter's about thinking and opinions and things happening, whereas um, Instagram is more about photography and fashion. And I love fashion, too. But, you know, I just find Twitter easier. And plus, I can be writing and then run over to Twitter and then run back to my writing. <laughs> you know, I want to see what they're saying in the town square. What are people talking about? I want to see because I should address it. Right now, I'm really hitting jobs and money hard because I feel with so many people out of work, that's what's on their mind but also humanitarian uh, activities, you know, that we're, we're going to be helping each other a lot next year because we can't look to government. They're printing money in the basement. That's all deficit spending. Jerome Powell said we're going to have to pay it all back. It's going to take 12 years. So people will be helping people, and and that's very inspirational, and it will be a, um, a nice change, and that will bring us together because there will be need and we will be sensitive to other people's needs. It will be nice. It will be a good year. Fantastic. So. That's, what, that's what I like to hear, and you heard it here from uh, – you heard it You heard it here first from Susan Miller over at AstrologyZone.com. This is a great interview, and uh, Susan, really appreciate you coming on the show today and uh, connecting Thank with you. my audience and sharing your, your passion for what you do. And uh, to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot thank of value you. out of this. Thank you. Um, if you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, uh, leave me a review on the Apple iTunes store, and if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Luxury, definitely give us a subscribe there um, and, and let us know what you thought. And Susan, again, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for coming on the uh, show. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye.